Hey guys, welcome to part three on the song Cavatina. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning the chords or the, the harmony part of the duet arrangement. In part one, I played the piece. In part two, we went over the, the lead part or the melody part of this arrangement. And in the final lesson, which is today's lesson, we're going to be learning the second guitar part of the arrangement, which is the chords. And you can use this to play with a partner. If you have a duet partner, you can play, you know, one of you plays part one and the other person plays part two. Or you can use this as a finger picking exercise, which is really great. Um, it has a fixed right hand pattern and the left hand changes quite often and has some really unusual chords. If this is your first time here, guys, please consider subscribing to our channel. You can drop us a comment, maybe leave us a like. And if you'd like to have the tabs or the backing tracks, or both, <laughs> head over to our Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash alt guitar, and you can join us there for $5. That being said, let's get down to it. So let's take a look at the beginning of this piece. We're in a key of E major, and we're using a time signature of 3-4, and on the right hand, what we're gonna use is a simple arpeggio that sounds like this. So that's thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index, and thumb. So thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index, and then we start again. In that first section, what, we, what we're gonna play is we're gonna play the chord of V, and I'm gonna finger it like that so that the bass um, can easily change to the next chord because the bass descends. So we have E uh, The bass is going to go down to E over D sharp And then it's going to go down to the C sharp the bass and then the chord is A major over C sharp And then we have F sharp minor 7 B sus 9 and then we're back to E but this time is as a major seventh chord. So we had E major, E major over D sharp, A over C sharp, F sharp minor seventh, B sus nine, and back to E, but using this, this fingering here, E major seventh. With the arpeggio that sounds like this. Notice that when I got to the B sus9, the first, the first voicing I'm going to use is like that. The second voicing is like this. That's what they do in the recording, but you know you could you could play tw twice like this if you want. But it's quite nice to change if you can. It does make it slightly harder to do like that, but it's it's worth it if you can do it. So here I'm thinking E major. E major over D sharp, and the bass goes to C sharp over A, and then we have a two, five, one progression. F sharp minor seven is the second degree of E. B sus nine is like the dominant, although it's an assess, but it's still a dominant. Uh, functions the function of this chord is a dominant, and then we have to we have the root, the key of the back to the home key, E major seven. And then after that, it gets quite interesting, and this is one of the flavors of this piece. Um, the, we have an E7. I'm gonna, on the right hand, I'm gonna do a double thumb there because we, it kind of changes, the, the strings change a little bit. So I'm gonna do thumb, thumb, index, middle. You could, you could still do this, thumb, index, middle, ring, middle. I just don't like playing the index on this string because it makes it scratchy. So E7 with this fingering here, and then we have a kind of a cycle of major and major seventh chords. So A to D major seventh, to G major seventh, to C major seventh. So these are all up a perfect fourth. So A up a perfect fourth to D major seventh, 
another perfect fourth to G major seventh, another perfect perfect fourth, and then we're back to the two five one progression. So from the E seven, we go to A to D to G G major seventh, C major seventh, back to the two. And this time here, we're going to play a slightly different line. We're going to go into the inside of the strings. So it's still a, a B sus. But what we're going to do is this. Because that's what, how it's going to work with the rest of the, of the song. So very slowly, it'll sound like this. So after that we have the repeat of the first section. The first section repeats almost note for note. If you're playing this as part of a duet, um, you're going to want to add a little bit of rebat, a little bit of slowing down in some of the sections. So let me just demonstrate to you how I would play this. So you notice that when we get to this run here, there's a little bit of slowing down. It's like a little breath. Um, we're taking a little bit of time just because the section gets to an end and we're going to repeat that. Um, so it, you know, it calls for a little slowing down. Now after that, we have the, the, the piece basically repeats uh, note for note from the beginning um, of the melody. And we're back to an E, but in a recording they, they play an E up here, which is quite nice as well. So for now I'm just going to show you how to play it there. If you want, although you could you could repeat note for you could repeat the chords from this point as well if you wanted. So we're gonna get to an E here on the fourth position. And then the bass goes down to a D sharp just as before. And this is quite a nice uh, voicing. Um, back to the a over C sharp, same here, same there, and back to here, E major 7th, then we have the E7, and the whole sequence uh, of A, uh, of major chords, A major, D major 7th, G major 7th, C major 7th, back to here, and then we're gonna do this um, this shape here for the B sus9 still that bar and the the single note run that we're doing here is virtually the same, but we're gonna end here. So it sounds like this. Okay, so it's B sus9. And then we do and like that and that marks the beginning of the new section which is marked letter B on the score and here we have a very brief modulation we're gonna start with the chord of C sharp minor 7 with this really nice voicing so we have C sharp minor 7 then F sharp F sharp sus9 resolving to a B major 7. Okay, so it's a really nice, really nice um, chord, chord progression, really. Uh, C sharp minor 7 to F sharp sus9 resolving to B major 7th and then B major 6th. 
So. So after this brief modulation in the key of B major, we're going to repeat some of the same chords that we had in the first section of the piece. So after the B major 6, we're going to go back to F sharp minor 7, to the B sus 9, back to the E major 7th, and then here E7. So these chords are similar to what we had before, only that now we're going to go to E major 7th, and then this bit here is where the melody starts ascending. Uh, the guitar one starts ascending like that, getting ready to get to the top E. So we're gonna go um, E7 to A major 7th, D major 7th, similar to before, and now here comes the change. The bass, the bass goes to an E, we have an F sharp 7th chord over the bass of E. And then the bass is going to descend to a D sharp. I'm going to play the D sharp here. This is quite a tricky chord, which is a B major over the bass of D sharp. You play it like this if you don't like this stretch. So. great um, section because the bass goes from E to D sharp then to D I'm going to use the D open string and then we suddenly find ourselves with with that C shape you can also play like that open and then we're gonna go to to this shape this is the bit where the melody plays up here so going back to that part, we have F sharp over E, down a half step to D sharp, this is D sh uh, B over D sharp, then down a half step to D, and this is B over B minor over D, and then we're, go we're gonna go down to the C, and this is a C major seventh, and then we we're gonna strum with the thumb, just roll down, all the strings and this is a, a C major 7 chord and then here we're gonna wait we're gonna have to count two bars because the melody goes and then when the melody hits that high E for the second time we're gonna play the next chord which is like a B sus with a flat 9 so we're going to play the C major 7th using this shape here, and we're going to count. We're going to wait for two bars, and then we're going to play the B sus flat 9, and then we're going to wait for three bars. And then the next section is when the bass takes over the melody. And we're going to play the, we're going to play some really nice kind of obscure chords, but they work perfectly well. So let me show you just the chords on, the, on their own, just so for you to try to figure out how they're connected. So it sounds like this, just the, just guitar two sounds like this. time see if you can figure out how they're connected so the first chord that I played I don't know if you could hear that's some form of an F sharp 7 it's just that it's in its first inversion, the bass is over the A sharp. But it has all the notes there, so the third on the bass, the seventh, the fifth, and the root. So that, the second chord is a B minor. This one is here easier, easier to hear. And this is a dominant, 
two tonic. So five, one. And then the next chord is really interesting because it goes to this this voice in here, which is a B flat. B flat over the base of A flat, turning the B flat into a dominant. So the it's in third inversion, the root, uh, the bass note is actually the the seventh. The root's there. So it's a B7, B flat seven for our purposes, it's a B flat seventh in third inversion, resolving to a an E flat minor. It's just that this voice in here is uh, in first inversion, it's really that chord. So it's an E flat minor over the base of G flat. So E flat minor in first inversion. So we had F sharp to B minor, 5 1, um, B flat 7 to E flat minor. So again, a 5 to 1. And then this shape here, which is an E flat 7. Um, but with a bass on the seventh, so in third inversion, E flat in third inversion, with the, uh, the bass on D flat, resolving to A flat minor, A flat minor uh, in first inversion. But it's this is this voicing, but really what we're using are these notes. So essentially, what we have is. Uh, F sharp seven to B minor. Then we have B f B flat seven to E minor. Then E flat seven to A flat minor. And I think what it gives its kind of obscure flavor is the jump between the the tonalities. It's kind of a sudden a jump, but it does make sense in the context of the piece and then after the A flat minor chord we have is E7 then we have a B7 in a second inversion with a fifth on the bass and I think on the recording it sounds to me that the voicing they're using is this kind of a voicing here you could do it like that if you want to without the fourth finger so it's E, we're going to do two bars of E to B, B7, and then it goes to um, the E7 using this, like an E7 in the shape of D7, but uh, using this fingering, and then back to A, and then we're back to that progression which goes to 5, and then that run with the same slight rubato here and that takes us um, to the beginning of, to the kind of middle section of the piece again where the middle bit repeats you can do the same fingering here for the repeat which is quite nice all of that will repeat at the very end we're going to do these three lush cards which you can do whilst the music is finishing we have that the guitar one plays that, so we're gonna play the first chord we're gonna play is the C sharp minor, C sharp minor seven with this fingering, going to an F sharp minor seven with the major six there. It's like an F sharp minor 13. And then we're gonna play an E sus four. And then, and then just at the end, as the song is resolving, we're going to play this and resolve to E. So at the very end we play the F sharp, the A, the E and the B, the B and the E rather, resolving to E. Thanks for watching guys, this concludes the lesson series on the piece Cavatina. If you'd like to have the tabs or the backing tracks, those are available on our Patreon page. That's patreon.com forward slash altguitar. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to our channel. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Leave us a comment, drop us a like, and I look forward to seeing you soon.
Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now. Thank mm-hmm. you.